all right shalom shalom this is the second video i wanted to go into very briefly well maybe not very briefly but briefly enough um because i don't like to make you guys sit through super long videos <laughs> but um i wanted to talk about hair i know i mentioned um my hair in a previous video and that's why i have it out now so you guys can kind of see what's going on with it right now but um yeah so i have my hair loose and out and it's a very coily texture as you can kind of see at pretty much every end of my twist is trying to revert back to the coil they won't just be a twist but it's actually trying to come undone and coil back up because the end that's how pretty much my hair is how it grows out of my head in very coily texture and the reason I'm talking about hair is because one I know for me personally um when I started when I went natural or went back to my natural state uh of my hair it was really hard to figure out how to take care of it and keep it up because I didn't know like I thought my hair was like 4C hair which I'm, I still don't even know what classification my hair would be first of all so there's that and then secondly um a lot of those products that were recommended just didn't work for me so one of the most important things is to you kind of have to just try stuff out if you're going to use store-bought products you have to try stuff out and figure out what works for you because what works for one person 100 percent does not work for the next person i can personally attest to that i just gave away two um shopping bag fulls of products i no longer use and it was because and it can get expensive testing on all the dis different types of stuff so that's why i went the supernatural way i say supernatural because it's like excessively natural but i don't even use store-bought products anymore um i just do apple cider vinegar rinses every two or three weeks and um use baking soda to wash my hair and it gets it nice and clean so i definitely appreciate that i know some people um not on youtube but on other social uh, social media venues they were asking well how do you clean locks and stuff like that and you clean them by washing them often like, like you would do anybody else's hair now i do know based on like just general conversation and stuff like that that i do wash my hair a lot more than a lot of other people do when i was a loose natural i did wash it every week um in the summer i would do wash and goes so i would wash it every day my hair loves water it does not like products though so that's the thing and so it was really hard for me to find my knack for what work for my hair but um i seem to have found it so far uh those things do really good you just have to um be sure that your hair gets moisture back into it because the baking soda can be very drying uh if you do use that to wash your hair so right now when i retwist my hair because i am locking it again in micro locks as you can see but um i had my hair locked before in like my late teens early 20s i had it locked for seven years and it got really long and when it was wet it was heavy and i don't like hair on the back of my neck which is why i'm about to put this stuff up in like some buns or something but um i, I remember coming home from new york I was coming back home and I decided in the car when I got home I was going to cut my hair off and that's exactly what I did and I was a full head scallywag and her hair in the back like 
and I liked it, but I did that back when I was 16, too. I um, cut all my hair off and had very little hair. Was I 16? Yeah, maybe like 16, 17, cut all my hair off, had a really, really, really short haircut. Y'all know what I'm talking about. These little puffs are going to look crazy, but that's okay. Um, I just need this hair off of my shoulders and my neck. Like, it feels itchy to me. And I don't know if it's just in my mind or if it's really itching it, but it feels like it's itching it. So, it's coming up off my neck. I tried for y'all. I tried for y'all. I did one video and we got through five minutes of video before it was back up okay so one of the things i can say is i did try a lot of products and some of them broke my hair off that's why i said it's important to find what really works for you and that's one of the reasons why i um went ahead and twisted it my husband asked me to twist it because it was just getting too much for me I was sick at the time I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia so I was like in constant pain all the time this was back in July and I was in constant pain so it was hard for me to wash my hair every week as a loose natural um it was just hard so he was like, well, maybe you can twist it. So one night I stayed up and my poor little fingers were sore for like three days afterwards. But I just twist. I just, I made sure I had one door part in the front. Everything else is like freehand because I'm about that life and I didn't care about no parts. So I went ahead and yeah, I twisted it. And then he said, that's too small. It's going to take you forever to redo it. So I combined some of those twists because they were really like coils. And that's what it is. Like, man, it's really coily. Like, it just won't be, I don't want to say regular, but for lack of a better word. Well, that's how my hair is. That's how my, this is regular for my hair. It's coily. It's not so much curly, but it really is like, those springs in the pin that I told you about, like, that's the shape of my hair. I don't know what classification that is. But I remember, okay, so I twisted it, and I still use these wax to retwist it because I had my hair locked for seven years. I still had, like, four jars of these wax because I was never the type of person to, like, just have one and be searching all over for wherever I put it, um, no, I would buy like two, three at a time because I don't like to keep shopping for stuff. I believe in buying a good amount of stuff. I won't say necessarily bulk, but a decent amount that you don't have to go to the store every two, three months for stuff that you only use a couple times a month. And so I still have like four jars of that left. So I was like, well, I'm definitely going to use this. Seeing as I had two, and I'm not exaggerating, I had two shopping bags full of products, all kinds of products. I mean, all kinds of products. I started off with Cantu, and in the end, I was um, with Shea Moisture, and then um, it was something else. And I want to say it's like Afro Solistic. I don't know if that's the name of it, but... It has this picture. It's like a black and white picture. A lady with an apple. I like their products. They smell so good. And they moisturize pretty good. But, like, my hair doesn't like products. So, I was constantly washing it out. And it's expensive to do that and all of that stuff. Okay, so, now we're here at this stage where it's just starting to lock. And, well parts of it because you guys saw how I was trying to curl back up, <laughs> unravel and go back into the strands that they were formerly in. My hair is not cooperating completely, but I have a little cooperation, so I'll take that. At least it's not totally rebellious. I'm appreciative for whatever little cooperation I can get from my hair. 
And I feel like it's really important not only to be patient when you're going through your natural hair journey, as people call it, or I call it learning how to take care of your hair in its natural state. I guess that's a journey. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I would not perm my hair again. I haven't perm my hair in years. And when I cut my locks off the first time, it was really of an impulse thing. So, but I probably won't. I'll cut it back, but I won't cut it off. Um, because after that, I had started perming, and then I, after a while, I stopped perming and just went back to let it re- revert back to its natural state because I had it short and curly. And I was like, well, my hair can do that by itself. Um, and when I was doing my wash and goes, I was using leave in conditioners. Um, different ones because because none of them were just like so amazing that I had to stick with one product. So I would actually go between different ones, and it was one little green bottle of Garnier. It smelled so good. It smelled good. I love good smelling hair, but um, it was a little green bottle leave-in conditioner Garnier. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't know how to. I don't even remember the name 100%, but um, I would put that, put a little leave-in conditioner in the hair, and then put some eco styling gel on there now. Contrary to everybody else, the green one with the olive oil in it, that didn't get my coils popping like that. Um, what did was the crystal one, the white one, the clear one. It was that one, the clear one, and then the one that did the second best definition was the one with the argan oil. But the first one, the clear one, just clear, it was no oil added to it or anything. That was the only gel I could use on my hair that did not dry my hair out, that did not strip it, and gave it really great definition. And no, I'm not promoting these products, I'm just telling you what worked for me. Because I stayed with the wash and goes in the summertime. Uh, but that didn't really fly for the wintertime. So, like, when I made, I think it was, like, my second or third video on YouTube. And I had my hair out. That was a Bantu knot twist out um, called Defining Beauty in 2017. And, um, yeah, like... I would do Bantu knots just to not have to try to manipulate five bajillion million coils on top of my head. Because that is really complicated, (laughs) to say the least. It is really complicated to try to mess with those things. And I'm trying to see if I can find a picture real quick of... One of the last pictures I took as a loose natural. I know I had to twist in that picture. And I'm not going to look for very long. But. It's like every picture I had a head wrap on. I was about that head wrap like for real. Okay, I didn't mean for it to be so quiet, but this is a picture I took. See my little coils in the back. Right there, that was in the early summer, and this is what it's like now. This was, um, I wonder if I could have told you what month it was. Technology tells you these things now, nowadays, they tell you when you took the picture. It was in July, 
Okay, so July, so called 2013. So yeah, um, that's what it was. That was my little wash and go. It was if I pulled it back, it got wavy, and I could tuck it from under. What is it called? I don't know. I'm sorry. Like I'm tired <laughs> trying to do this video, but the little poof at the top. I'll remember when the video cuts off, but I always like those little things, so I did that and then just had to back out. And it was fine, it was easy, just put a nice little, I like little hair clips and stuff like that, but you can just use bobby pin and stuff like that. Um, so now what I keep to use my hair moisturized, because I used to use a leave-in conditioner, but I don't anymore. I just take rose water. And I put a drop of tea tree oil, a couple drops of vitamin E oil, and maybe like two or three drops of peppermint oil, shake it up. And I have like little spray bottles because I make our own um, hair care products. I make like my husband's beard and hair cream. I make our toothpaste. I make all kinds of stuff. But um, yeah, I just take that, shake it up, and spritz it in my hair. It really reminds me, not exactly, but similar to that um, braid spray. You guys remember the braid spray? I think it was like Afro Sheen or something like that. It was African something. Um, and they used to have like the braid spray. Back in the 90s, it was real popular. At least here, the DMV was popular. But... I just put it in the bottle and shake it up like I used to do my bracelet and just shh. And it smells so good. Um, and it does keep your scalp. I spray it on my scalp and let it mix onto my hair because, like I said, I do still twist it with the beeswax. So I don't really need to moisturize the length part of my hair. It's really just the scalp. So I'll spray that. And um, it feels like totally refreshed. It feels great. Do that maybe like once or twice a week. And I wash my hair every two, three weeks at the max. So, yeah, because I still do need to wash my hair more than like once a month, which would be like every four weeks. I need to do it a little more frequent than that because that's just how my hair is set up. So, yeah, washing it a lot can be a little annoying, but in order to have healthy hair, that's what you have to do. And all I want to say is, like, just don't get discouraged. Just keep working through it, pressing through it. And like I say, what works, what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for the next person. So you just have to... I would say be smart about it as far as using or putting so much money into it. Like maybe buy the smaller uh, version of the product as opposed to a whole bunch of it like I did. <laughs> it would save you so much money because you'll know whether or not it works um, when the option is available because I know sometimes that's not the case. But when the option is available, just buy the smaller bottle or the smallest bottle and try that out to see how that works and if you don't like it then you didn't just spend fifteen twenty dollars on one product um and you can use that extra money to go towards something else and going the natural route i know it's a lot of different people um on youtube who recommend a lot of different things i've watched their videos I can honestly say I figured out what worked for me myself through trial and error. Like, I tried their techniques and stuff like that. And I remember even trying to get definition for my curl pattern. I was putting all these products in my hair, and it was so sticky, and it felt so cool. And... It was just weird. And I remember thinking, like, okay, well, my hair has a natural curl pattern. I should, like, water brings it out. So I can just define that. So I'll just wet it. 
put the leave-in conditioner in it so it's not dried out by the gel. Put that gel up in there and go on about my business. Um, so yeah, you have to sometimes not follow the trends or what's new, what's popular, um, but really get into what works for you and find what your routine is and stuff like that because it's going to be different for everybody. You know, when I do other people's hair, which I don't do often, now, I used to, but not anymore. I don't have time. But um, when I did, they would only need their done maybe like once a month or something like that, which is great. <laughs> if you only have to be here once a month. I'm talking about like locks and stuff like that. But some people don't have to wash their hair as often. Some people have to wash their hair more often. It's just everybody's different. So find what works for you. Don't be discouraged. And most important, love what's coming out of your scalp. Like this is your crown and glory. So you should definitely appreciate that. I need to spray my hair because it's itching just a little bit. But um, yeah, appreciate what the most high gave you. Like everybody has whatever they have and that's beautiful like you have to make the best of with what you have i don't know nobody else who has like little pin curls coils boinging out of the side of their head but you know what after i figured out to stop manipulating it and trying to get it to do something other than what it was created to do which was just be coily instead of curly or wavy or whatever then my hair started really thriving a lot more so yeah i just started doing something and we cool over here so i think that's pretty much all i have as far as hair like just learn to love your hair appreciate your hair there's no such thing as bad hair there's no such thing as ugly hair there is a such thing as dry hair there is a such thing as damaged hair, but, you know, we don't have to do so much to our hair. Um, we just need to love it, you know, and take everything in stride, go through the trial and error. It took me years with an S to figure out what worked for me, and it was like the most basic stuff laying around the house, you know, like vinegar and baking soda really but yes really okay really these things they they work for me they work for some other people for some other people they may not work it might be too stripping or too drying or you know whatever but my head loves moisture and so I have to put that moisture back in. I put the rose water in there. I do twist my hair with beeswax and stuff like that. But if you guys do have a suggestion for something else that is not a gel, because my hair, if I put gel in my hair, I will have to wash it every week. And I don't want to do that. It takes me four hours to twist my hair. So I don't want to <laughs> spend that much time with it. But if you guys have something that's not a gel or is a gel that doesn't flake and doesn't cause an itch and stuff. I saw something about flaxseed gel. And I have flaxseeds, but I eat them. I have not <laughs> made a gel out of it. And I won't say that I will do that, like, really soon. So if you guys have a recommendation or something else I can use once my beeswax is gone, because I won't be buying any more of that. Um, because I love the bees. But, um... Yeah, leave it in the comment section. Let me know and tell me about what you got going on on top of your head. You know, we all are in this together. Everybody has some type of issue or struggle or whatever. And we can talk about it. So that's it. If I make another video, my hair will be covered because we're done talking about hair for now. But if you have any questions or comments, of course, leave it in the comment section. Until the next video, blessings to your house and shalom.